Welcome to another episode of the Strong Family Project Podcast. I'm Joe, joined by Mel. Welcome back to the Strong Family Project Podcast, where we guide you on the path to raising confident, independent, and resilient children in a strong family environment. A few months ago, our children came home, and they were constantly distracted by conversations that they heard at school. And we taught them this one technique and made a visual and I think it's pretty powerful to share with you. It's been hanging on our wall ever since, and our kids have referred to it. And so by the end of the today's episode, we want to empower you with a strategy and saying to help your kids navigate all the directions that they're pulled in. I believe this will also help parents for all the directions that we are pulled into. So it's a powerful episode about one concept today. Now, as we get into it, Mel's going to hold it up in a second. For those who are watching on YouTube, you can actually see it. I will describe it for people who are doing audio only. As we about to hold it up, Mel's getting excited. <laughs> Mel's smashing her microphone <laughs> with it right now. I'm too excited. Don't forget to visit us at strongfamilyproject.com to get your free seven steps to the path because it, this stuff makes more sense if you're on the path. All right, Mel, hold it on up. So what I had the kids do when they were talking about all the different things and directions they were pulled in, I told them to cut two pieces of string of equal length and lay out one piece of string in a straight line, straight path. And the more likely they are <laughs> to stay on that path, the quicker they'll get to where they want to go. I told them to take an, the second piece of string that was the exact same length and then zigzag it side to side like they're getting pulled in every direction by other people in their life. That string went, oh, maybe 10% of the way. And so it's the same amount of string as in the same amount of time in your life. But one went significantly further than the other who was just swayed by everything going on. And they got that visual and Mel framed it and put it up on the wall. And she wrote some different questions around it to help the kids filter and decide if, hey, is this keeping me on my path or is this knocking me off and sending me zigzagging and off my path? And so the underlying concept is we all have the same amount of time. If we are affected with that time, we're gonna get a heck of a lot further. If we allow every juicy conversation to pull us side to side, we're not gonna get very far in life. And so that is the reality that time does exist and we do have to make choices and our resources are scarce. And so while it is a fake kindness to say, oh, I want to hear that what this person says and get really involved in what they're saying and then this other person, but you don't really get to live your own life. Mel, hit them with what you got there on those post-its. Okay, so the, we thought of one overarching question that anybody could ask themselves when they're being presented with some idea and they're not sure if they should go along with it or not. And it simply says, is this what I should be thinking about right now? So for example, if you are in the middle of an assignment at school and some kid's distracting you and you're getting off task and you ask yourself, is this what I should be thinking about right now? Should I be thinking about my task or what this kid is trying to say? So it just directs you back to what you should be focused on. I think this is very important during more unstructured times like recess and lunch when different topics could come up. And a kid can simply ask themselves, is this what I should be thinking about right now? Is this pushing me forward or is this pulling me into some kind of gossip that's going to make me sway side to side and not end up at my goal? So that's the overarching question that we came up with initially. Of course, I added some more later. Got artsy. <laughs> and I think an important thing to mention right now is how do they decide if this is what they should be thinking about? And a lot of that is based on your family values. I even asked my son Logan today, I said, how has this, now obviously I framed this because I thought this demonstration was so powerful and I really like visuals. And I said, Logan, how has this helped you? And he said, at school, a lot of times kids talk a lot about social media and he's not on social media. And I'm like, how do you know what to do with that? How do you not get pulled into those conversations? And he says, because of our family values, that's simply what he said, because we have created we have these six family values back in episode one, which is basically the foundation of the entire strong family path. Because we're always reviewing them and discussing them and helping our kids embody them, he, when he's in a situation that could potentially push him to the side and get him off track, he remembers are the family values and he's able to straighten himself back out onto the right path. 
So that's how they would know what to think about is based on what you fostered at home, what kind of culture you have, what kind of values you've set up. Yeah, this is well explained on the character level. This applies to a lot more as well. In an earlier episode, one of the first seven on the Strong Family Path, we talked about goal setting as well. And we have the kids sit down and they draw everything that they want to accomplish in the next year. And then we look at that and we say, all right, what do you want to do this week that will move you closer to that goal? And they build a structure that will help them towards that goal. Now, if we didn't help them week to week, you can easily get off track. Take another example. Everyone says January, a lot of people set January resolutions with great intentions to accomplish this big thing by the end of the year. And they get to, I don't know, January 14th and someone has a party and one of the resolutions is to have the fittest year ever. And they go to the party and oh, they got that food you really like. And all of a sudden you're zigzagging off the path just a little bit. And then you're like, yeah, I'm off the path. I might as well keep going off the path. Now it's all out the window by February. <laughs> and that's not to pick on resolutioners. It's the simple mindset that you weren't married to what you wanted to get done and you didn't set the weekly commitments to get there. And then in the big picture, you're just not going to get there. And so it applies yeah, to the family characters and core values it also applies to goal setting and accomplishments. And a lot of the stuff we talk about can feel like you're drinking from a fire hose with information. And so it's not try to do everything at once. It's try to do one thing, do it well, and take that step on the path and then create your next step and then create your next step versus trying to do it all at once. You get scatterbrained and then you're zigzagging all over the place. I know I've done it with a lot of things. So I'm speaking from a deficit here where you get pulled side by side to side with things like we're doing this podcast and we have a vision for it and we're staying pretty strong to the vision, but we also have attractive offerings to be guests on other podcasts. Many of have been wonderful I can only think of one in particular where I looked at their episodes and I'm like, ah, that's not aligned with our values. Yeah, it could e- expand our audience, but we're just going to say no thank you to this one because it's going to knock us off what we want to teach about and start talking about concepts that aren't relevant to our strong family path. And we say no, and then we get back on our path and keep going by shooting new episodes for you and responding to your questions and what's on your mind. Yeah, this is a little bit of a separate issue, but it's okay to say no if things don't align with your values. And that really has helped us in anybody, really. If you think about it, if you know where you're trying to get, you know when you have to say no, even if it might feel bad. And and speaking of feelings, I think this is really yeah. powerful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is really powerful when it comes to feelings, because I think a lot of times, kids especially, because they're not as emotionally intelligent as hopefully adults are, they are swayed by feelings. This kid said this thing and I felt this way and it felt good, so I went in that direction. And this felt good, so I went in this direction. And we're trying to teach our kids, yes, we all have feelings, of course, and they can be very useful. I know you might not totally agree with me. (laughs) But if there's like a wild animal coming at you outside and you feel fear, that fear is useful to helpfully help you decide to get out of that situation. But I think people too often rely, uh, their decision making too often relies only on feelings and not on something else. So if you're having a feeling about something that could easily sway you to the side, you have to teach your kids to stop and think about the core values of the family. Does this align? I think that's really important. And I actually had a Bible verse. Can I have my phone? Because I put a screenshot of it. And I picked a translation that is fairly easy to understand. But this really reflects, I think, what this is all about. And it says, The goal is that we no longer be little children tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching when people use tricks and invent clever ways to lead us astray. So it's basically what it says is little kids who don't have values, who don't really know how to make decisions for themselves, will just go with every single whim. They'll just do whatever they see, whatever kid they're with. They'll just be like, oh, that looks cool. I'll go this way. I'll go that way until you start to set boundaries and teach them the path of how to get somewhere more positive and to get where they're going. So we want to try to create that structure and create a filter for our kids to be able to learn how to make decisions for themselves and not just go with whatever sounds good at the moment. I want to empower you with three sayings that might help you teach this to to yourselves or for your kids. The first saying is you do not need to attend every argument you're invited to. 
with what we've explained so far is that, yeah, if someone persuades you and you follow on the path. It could be the opposite too, where they say something and then you spend so much time arguing against them that you've knocked yourself off the path the other way. <laughs> you don't have to intend every argument you're invited to. You have the right to ignore many of these conversations that are going on in the world that don't influence your family's life, your personal development, your personal life, your community, those layers on top of each other. The second saying is a little softer version, but still true. You don't have to attend every conversation you're invited to. People like to talk about a lot of things. I don't like to talk about a lot of things. I like to talk about hardly anything. And so when people are like, oh, did you hear this thing? Nope. <laughs> and I don't care. Not to be rude, but I don't want to have this conversation. And so you don't have to attend every conversation that you're invited to. And the third saying is you don't have to care about everything. And if you do try to care about everything, you actually aren't going to care very much because your lim resources are limited and you'll be very spread thing. It's better to care about a few primary things that you can actually influence. So you can reserve the right not to care. I see these sensationalized headlines and it goes back to the conversation one. You see these sensationalized headlines that want to pull you and they want to control your attention, which is hugely valuable in marketing. And you can powerfully just say, yeah, I just don't care about this. Either way, I don't care. I'm not against it, not for it. It doesn't influence my life. I'm going to stay on my path and not care about this thing that you're trying to pull me and then sell me something or sell me this idea or sell me on joining this thing because I just don't care. That's it's. A, I like that you said that because we talked about this in a previous podcast where for Lent I gave up social media. And yes, I'm back on and I look a little bit, but I already see that when I'm on there, I'm being pulled just like on this string. I'm being pulled to the side by things that I don't need to care about, by things that are going to be distracting me from my goal. And my goal is to focus on my family. That's my primary goal. So it's, again, you have to know what your goals are, know what you're about, know what you value, and then be willing to say no to things that are going to pull you aside, even if you feel bad about it. And then I had this other piece here where I was listening to a podcast, and I think it was Dr. Phil on Joe Rogan or something. And I just thought this was super, a super great questions to ask yourself in addition to though is this should, what I should be thinking about right now so he what he said was he has to constantly test and question the rationality of your thoughts and remember whatever you think about is what you're going to be acting on thoughts lead to actions so the first one is this thought in the in my best interest is it pushing me forward is it something that's going to help me get to my goal number two is it based on fact or is it simply an opinion I think nowadays it's very hard to sometimes know what the facts are, but you have to think about it. Is this thought I'm having really based on fact? Is it 100% true? Number three, does it get me what I want? So again, what you think about is what you're going to act on. So if you are always on social media and you're spending two hours a day when you could have been spending that time doing something more purposeful and more something that would progress you, is it getting you where you want? And the last one is, does it prolong my life? So are you making decisions that are going to lead you to have a healthy life, to be there for your kids? I just appreciate it. Whether you like these questions or not, maybe they're not worded perfectly. I think the point is to question your thinking, to be aware that what you're allowing into your mind and into your heart affects who you are and what you end up doing and what you teach your kids. So we want our kids to learn how to think critically. We want them to learn to have discernment and not just go with every cool, fresh, interesting looking idea that's there. Yep. <laughs> now it's funny you mentioned Dr. Phil. I always thought he was kind of like that Jerry Springer of, of <laughs> psych afternoon psychology shows. And that episode when he was getting interviewed was, I made me question some assumptions. He had some good things to say in there. So I he did. keep an open mind with that stuff. But to your point, I'll give people another example because those are excellent tools. We've explained the concept. We've ex explained what the problem is, which sometimes just ex acknowledging a problem helps people navigate around it. And the problem is everyone's fighting for your attention because your attention is value to a lot of people, to their cause, to them selling you things, and you need to defend it proactively. I'll give you another example. When Mel mentioned opinion and facts, a lot of people argue over opinions and it can't be proven. And some people state opinions like facts and it's just best to back out of the conversation with those people because they don't have the, the intelligence to understand the nuances of what's going on. I'll give you an example from business world. 
I had to negotiate with someone about some work that they did. And they said, Hey, this is, I told you it's going to be this much, but it's really going to be $5,000. And I said, we had discussed this $2,000 amount. And I think that is fair for the work. And then I could tell it upset the person handled it well, but they're like a little frustrated. They started digging and said, I can't prove what I am saying. Can't prove that it's worth that much. I can't prove it's worth this much. Like we could go get a third party estimate, but honestly, like we can discuss this in circles for a very long time. And none of us are going to, neither of us, me too, or I'm going to be able to prove what our opinion is in this. So we can either come to terms or we get someone else's opinion to, to validate where we're at. And so sometimes you just have to say, I don't know, you don't know, we can't prove this thing. So either we have to come up with a fair, equitable way to figure it out, or let's just remove from the conversation, which we had, we did figure it out in that situation. But it does come up a lot where people, myself included, get married to their opinion, and then someone gives pushback and you just argue in circles and it's just not worth that time. No, I think this is really about actions. The question, is this what I should be thinking about right now? Because then it leads to actions. We want, this is a podcast about families. And a lot of times these, this applies to me too. When I remember a couple months ago when you first brought up this idea of these two strings, I loved it so much and I use it in my own life constantly because I'm trying to keep myself on my straight path and not to be pushed side to side. So thought thinking and opinions and talking about opinions like I really want action what are you going to do about it because really the just like you think about a path it steps forward if all you do is talk 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 you're not going to get anywhere anyway so by using discernment by asking yourself these questions you are able to take steps forward and that's really what we want for our family for our kids as individuals and that we hope that you could be inspired to maybe use this kind of thing and I think visuals This is a sidebar, but visuals are really great with kids. So you could even have this little discussion with your kids with a little visual of these two strings and just simply show them, look at how much farther you get in life if you use some discernment and you really try to critically think about what you are focusing on. I like your analogy about standing and talking or moving forward. I use that physical example a lot in my life, and this will be my final thoughts on this one. Says so sometimes people want to stand around and just like talk about which path to go, which is we want to go to that point. Like we could go this way, we can go slightly that way, we can go slightly that way. It'll all get you there. But they stand and talk and they don't actually make any progress. So I will literally have a lot of my conversations walking. So I want to see progress physically while we are discussing topics. I always want to be moving forward. I don't want to be standing still for, and I don't want to be standing still for very long if I have to stand still and think about something. We can always be making small amounts of improvement. And it goes back to my point with the strong family path. You don't have to do everything at once. You don't have to overhaul your parenting at once. You don't have to solve every child issue at once. However, we'll get really stuck in standing still and just talking about them, talking about them, and not nudging them forward. So start talking while you're walking and start making some progress on your path. And this makes me think of over analysis. When you talk about it too much, you overanalyze. I've certainly done this. I've come to you many on many occasions where I don't know which way to go. I don't, I, there's too many options. This, all these things could go wrong with these different things. And you're like, just pick one. I think you said that to me one time, just really blatantly, like just pick one and start moving forward. And that's really what this is about. Pick one, move forward. Not You're not always going to have the perfect solution. And that is part of why we do weekly commitments towards our goals, because you can change it up. If this didn't work, you can change it up. You're not married to one particular thing, but just, what is it? Paralysis by overanalysis. Is that how it goes? I think that really speaks to this as well. It's okay to discuss, but you need action. I'll give another shout out. I think I mentioned this in a previous episode to my brother, Pat, who was trying to dig a basement at his house. And he was calling around to rent different ex- excavators and it was all like going to be weeks and various amounts of money and like tried to rent one. That person didn't show up and now like a weekend and he needs this thing done and a, a normal person <laughs> would just be like, all right, let's try to find the next solution. And call more places and do this. Let's just find this easy solution. It's got to be out there somewhere. And he's just got a shovel, start digging until his basement was done. Yes, it was physically harder, but who cares? That progress was daily where he had to no no longer make those phone calls. He just had to continue to execute on the path. And yeah, it was one of those ones where it slightly veers off to the side, but he got to where he wanted to go and perhaps even faster. 
than if you waited for another person who could have stood them up and then try to rent something else, certainly cheaper. And it's just some physical work. Like we, we th- overthink to avoid physical work way too far. And I know it's a little bit of a tangent. We sold a, a table we had at our old house, which was super heavy. And my brother and I had to carry it and it got assembled in the house. The person that bought it was not in shape and he's dev- designing like this lever system of wedges to like slide this table out the door and back up his car and make a ramp up to our deck. And I said, Hey, how about just, well, let's just start carrying it a little bit. Let's start making some <laughs> progress. We're not making a Rube Goldberg here. And some people try to take every problem and turn it into a Rube Goldberg when it's really just, Hey, just take some steps and get it done. Just do it. I think too, with the pad example is he had his end goal defined well. If you know where you're going, it's a lot easier to make decisions to not get off track. So sometimes just defining where you want to go. Like, for example, if you want your family to become a more organized system, like Joe said earlier, taking all seven steps at once, probably not reasonable. You're going to get overwhelmed. But if you define where you want to be, what does success look like for your family? And then start taking a step forward today, even if it's walking with your spouse and talking about it. And that forward motion really does help. I feel like we we get a lot more accomplished on our walk conversations than if we were just sitting here talking. Definitely. I almost want to do a podcast walking now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's, I know that said was my last thought, but we talked a lot. We gave a lot of concepts and yes, we have a visual. Yes, I think you should make the visual and teach the concept to your family. But here's where I would go from here. Next step. So it's not overwhelming. Is start looking around your life and identifying distractions to where you want to go. And just start there. And then once you have your list of distractions, start to slowly nudge them to less. So now that time can be invested on wherever you personally or you and your family or you want your kids to go. Said. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Strong Family Project podcast. If it made you think and gave you some value, the exchange is you got to right, give us a review so we can keep putting out episodes and more people can hear about this project and live a strong family life. Thank you for listening.